This is the first of a number of videos where I'm going to be walking you through uh, the Spark ML Lib, the machine learning library of Spark. There's quite a few different features of this library, and so we're going to cover quite a few videos looking at the different things that it can do, at least a number of them, and this will not by any means be exhaustive. The website has documentation on what you can do with ML Lib. Now, an interesting thing to note that relates to the naming of this library. Uh, in some ways, there are two machine learning libraries in Spark right now. One is under org Apache Spark ML, and you have a number of different sub packages of that. And then in addition, you have org Apache Spark ML lib. The ML lib versions are the ones that were written to work with RDDs. The ML ones are updated versions that work with uh, data sets. So the code that I will be uh, doing here is generally going to focus on the newer version that uses data sets. Uh, as of the time when I am doing this, not everything from the RDD version has been ported over, and so you'll note that the documentation still includes descriptions of the RDD stuff. It's possible that you might want to do something that is only covered there. Uh, so you should be aware that it exists. I'm going to be using the stuff that is in spark.ml. Okay, so what do we want to do with this and, and what is this machine learning stuff? Well, there, there's a lot of different machine learning algorithms. We can kind of break them into two broad categories. One's called supervised learning and the other's called unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, you know the answer for the values in your data set and you are trying to train an, uh, the program to be able to give you back kind of known answers. Uh, it could be classifying things, it could be fitting values uh, through a regression, whatever. You're trying to get the algorithm to intelligently match the answers that are, are accurate, either because a human said so or they were something that was measured, whatever. There's also the unsupervised algorithms. In unsupervised algorithms, you don't know the answer, and so you have to, uh, you're going to run this, the algorithm on it, and hope that it comes up with something that is meaningful. Now, your challenge is determining what the meaning is. And I'm actually going to start with one of these unsupervised learning algorithms. The one I'm going to work with is clustering. Um, and, and actually the problem that I'm going to do, we're going to do clustering twice. The first one is easier to understand, and so I think it will be helpful to, to do it first. The, the second one may not give us anything meaningful. The first one is guaranteed to give us something meaningful, though. So we're going to work with what's called k-means clustering. And what k-means clustering does, you give, your, you give a bunch of data points, uh, and you will have this algorithm try to find clusters of points in your data. The challenge here is it doesn't necessarily tell you what the meaning of those clusters are. Okay, so without further ado, let's go and try to write some code on this. Now the clusters that I want, or the data that I want to do this clustering on, is the NOAA data that we've played with previously. And I want to cluster actually the stations. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new package. I'm going to call this one Spark ML fitting with the naming scheme that I've used here. And our final goal with this code, which will take several videos to get through, is to see if we can use clustering to determine basically uh, different climate regions in the, uh, on the globe. Okay. Uh, so so that's, that's our goal, to see if we can automatically identify different climate regions. So I'm going to create an object, we'll call it NOAA clustering. There's two A's in NOAA. And as we've done many times before, I'm going to copy some of the code that we have because it will be helpful to us. Do an import there. 
Okay, so we have that, and I want to load in the stations data. Uh, I have code for doing this. It's tempting to use a, uh, a different form of that. Um, that lawn, sure, we can go with this gives us a row, this gives us a data frame. Actually, I'm going to go with the other form of reading this in because I kind of like to have things in uh, type data sets, at least for a while. So I'm going to create a case class for a station and it has the station ID, which is a string. It has the latitude, which is a double. It has the longitude, which is a double. It has the elevation of the station, also a double. And it has a name, which is a nice human, read uh, human readable string there. And so I will want to load in our station data into a data set of these stations and then cluster it geographically. Come back in the next video and play with that more, load this in, and look at the data, and then try to do the clustering on it.